Lagos Talks 91.3. President Mohamed Buhari has conferred national awards on 447 Nigerians, including the Director General of the World Trade Organization, WTO, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Baja Biamila, and the Minister of Works and Housing, Babat De Fashola. The National Honours Award Investiture Ceremony at the International Conference Centre in Abuja yesterday was in recognition of Nigerian citizens and foreign nationals who have distinguished themselves in their respective professions contributing to the national development. Some of those awarded the honour of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger GCON, Okonjo Iwiala, Honourable Justice Olukar Diariwola and Honourable Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed the current and estral chief justice of Nigeria, respectively. Prominent among awardees of commander of the Order of Niger, CON, is Delta State Governor and Vice Presidential Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Ifai Yukowa, and some state governors like Nasir Arufai of Kaduna, as well as Professor Babagana Zulum of Bronu. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said new permanent voter cards will be made available by November. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said this at a National Endowment for Democracy event in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Yakubu said 2.7 million double registrations we have weeded out of the last continuous voters registration exercise conducted by the Commission. According to him, about 50% of the new PVCs are ready but yet to be distributed to collection centers. The National Executive Council of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, will tomorrow Thursday convene an emergency meeting to evaluate recent changes, especially the positive response from the federal government to its demands. The union has directed its zonal branches to collate the views of members through vote during the meetings expected to hold tomorrow in its various zones across the country. The outcome of the meeting would result in suspension of the strike on late Thursday or Friday morning. ASU President Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, while responding to an inquiry to that effect, dismissed the report that the union had called off the almost eight-month-old strike, saying the strike was yet to be suspended. The Nigerian Navy yesterday received no fewer than 86 confiscated drones from the Nigerian Customs Service. The drones were those imported by individual and organizations without an end-user certificate. Speaking while presenting the drones to the Navy at the FCT's command warehouse, the Comptroller General of Customs, Colonel Ahmed Ali, said the drones were intercepted at the Inam Diazekiwe International Airport and were subsequently forfeited to the government. Receiving the drones on behalf of the Nigerian Navy, the Chief of Training and Operations, Rear Admiral Solomon Agada, promised that the drones would be put to good use. The federal government has approved the construction of the Lekki International Airport in the Lekki area of Lagos State. The Lagos State government said it would begin the construction of a new airport in the Lekki area of the state in 2023. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, presented the approval for the new airport to the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwulu, on behalf of the federal government at the Lagos Economic Summit 2022, held at a hotel and suite Lagos. The Senior Special Assistant to the Lagos State Governor on New Media, Jabril Gawad, disclosed this in a tweet. The 9th Lagos Aingbeti Summit takes center stage as experts from various economic fields converge to draw up resolutions that will transform and drive the all-round development of the state. While declaring this year's Aingbeti Summit open in Victoria Island, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu set the theme Lagos 2022-2052, charting the paths to sustainable development, the 30-year plan is apt as the state would leverage on successes achieved through collaboration. The governor also called on participants to offer perspective and workable resolutions to accelerate the socio-economic development plan of the state. The implementation of this development plan requires a purposeful and a dedicated leadership. This is our own unwavering promise to you all. As the government and your government, that will provide that required leadership to move us from just an idea 
to an action, to move us, to get, transform labels from just a mega thing to a model a mega thing. Commissioner for Budget and Economic Planning Sam Igube noted that 95% resolutions reached at previous editions of the AIMBETI Summit had been implemented, citing the Lekki Free Trade Zone, the Blue and Red Rail Lines, as typical testament as he restated that Lagos deserves a special status. Earlier, chairperson at Ingbeti 2022, Mary Iweluma, had said the Lagos State Development Plan 2022 to 2052 is to help Lagos achieve the Africa's mega city status, as over 24,000 registered participants are expected at this year's summit, which would last for the next two days. Based on the number of quality of startups, Lagos is ranked number 81 of the top 1,000 startup cities by the Global Startup Ecosystem Well, it seems you have or saw you that this represented a 41-step jump from its last year's position. River State Governor Yesom Wike has appointed 14,000 advisors for various political units in the state. According to a statement signed by the governor's spokesperson, Kelvin Ibiri, the appointments are with immediate effect and the advisors will play a pivotal role in the administration. Ibiri said Governor Wike has also appointed 319 ward liaison officers and 40 local government area liaison officers. You're still listening to the World News. Moving on to the foreign scene, leaders of the G7 group of rich nations have said they will back Ukraine for as long as it takes in the wake of Monday's major Russian missile attacks. The group, which met for emergency virtual talks, said it would keep on giving military and humanitarian aid. NATO also said it would stand with Ukraine for as long as necessary. At least 19 people were killed and scores more injured as Russian missiles hit regions across Ukraine, including the central Kyiv. Strikes continued into Tuesday with civilians advised to stay in air raid shelters. Buckingham Palace has announced King Charles III's coronation is to be held on Saturday, May 6, 2023 at Westminster Abbey. Camilla de Quinn Consort will be alongside the King and will also be crowned in the historic ceremony. Next year's coronation will be the first for almost 70 years, the last being for Elizabeth II in June 1953 and the first held on a Saturday since Edward VII in 1902. Buckingham Palace has indicated that the ceremony will combine the ancient and modern, saying it will be rooted in long-standing traditions but will also reflect the monarch's role today and look towards the future. In business news this morning, the IMF has declared an unchanged global growth forecast at 3.2%. Representing the world economic outlook for this quarter of the year, economic experts on the sidelines of the ongoing IMF World Bank annual meetings in Washington, D.C., forecasted global growth to slow from 6.0% in 2021 to 3.2% in 2022 and 2.7% in 2023. The development was observed as the weakest growth profile since 2001, except for the global financial crisis and the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. Speakers at the press briefing further noted that the cost of living crisis, the tightening financial conditions in most regions, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the lingering COVID-19 pandemic all weigh heavily on the outlook. Chief Economist and Director of Research Department, IMF, Pierre-Olivier Gorinkas, had urged that monetary policy stay the course to restore price stability. Our advice in general is that central banks should first start with uh, the traditional instruments of monetary policy. And as you want to think about non-conventional instruments, then you should think about what is the friction that is preventing conventional monetary policy from, from working that would require a country or a central bank to deploy alternative ways of uh, charting the course for, for monetary policy. Division Chief, Research Department of the IMF, Daniel Lee, in his remarks, had spoken specifically of Nigeria as it concerns the decline of oil and food prices. In Nigeria, in particular, we have a uh, forecast of inflation of about 19% this year, but then uh, some moderation uh, next year down to 17%. And part of that does reflect the um, monetary policy actions, the four percentage point increase in, in uh, Nigeria's 
central bank, as well as the decline that we expect in oil and, and food prices globally. Deputy Director of Research at IMF, Betia Cueva Brooks, however, spoke on reasons for milder recession contractions. There are several reasons uh, why the contraction in the recession is milder than we had previously predicted. First is that the energy exports have held up as a result of diversion of those uh, exports to non-sanctioning countries. The second reason is that uh, the, the government's footprint in the economy is large. And the third reason is, is the appreciation of the ruble, which has made inflation lower than previously predicted. And last but not least, there's been very large policy support provided uh, by the authorities. Again, we should emphasize that the impact of the war and the associated sanctions uh, is having a major toll on the Russian economy. And finally, to sport news, Nigeria's under-17 female team, the Flamingos, yesterday lost 1-2 to Germany in a Group B game at the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. Miracle Oseni had given Nigeria the lead after firing a spot kick home in the 30th minute of the encounter in Goa. However, Germany fought back in the second half to score twice. Nigeria, who scored 15 goals and considered none in the African qualifiers, are third on the table after New Zealand fell 3-1 to Chile in the other group game. The Flamingos will hope to get their campaign back on track when they take on New Zealand on Friday. The UEFA Champions League continued last night for match day four fixtures. Dynamo Zagreb drew 1-1 with FC Red Bull Salzburg. AC Milan lost 2-0 at home to Chelsea, Celtic lost 2-0 to RB Leipzig, and Takta Donetsk drew 1-1 with Real Madrid. Other results also saw FC Copenhagen hold Manchester City to a goalless draw, Borussia Dortmund drew 1-1 with Sevilla, Maccabi Haifa beat Juventus 2-0, while PSG were held to a 1-1 draw by Benfica. Tonight's fixtures sees Napoli welcome Ajax, Rangers face Liverpool, Atletico Madrid tackle Krab Bruges and Bayer Leverkusen against FC Porto. Lagos Talks 91.3